older buildings um, that's being neglected. In most of these arguments, there's a sort of a political card. It was built by a previous regime. It's not new. It's not modern. It's not flashy. That is the simple, plain, common truth. Potterstrom is about 120 kilometers from Johannesburg in South Africa. The city is well known for its educational institutions. One of the oldest is the Potterstrom Agricultural College. This college is also renowned for its historical buildings, especially the hostels, the Alex Home Hall, the Salborn Hall, and the old administrative building. In 1895, the Transvaal and big areas of southern Africa uh, suffered from the rinderpest that uh, killed a lot of cattle and a lot of uh, people lost a lot of their animals at that time. In 1897, the Transvaal Agricultural Union identified the need for an institution dedicated to train farmers and develop new agricultural practices. The Anglo Boer War of 1899 to 1902 delayed the building and development of this institution, but it promptly continued after the war. The Agricultural College and the Experimental Farm was founded in 1903. The first permanent building was the old administration building with its distinctive clock tower, which is still standing right next to the Selborne Hall. And the Salborn Hall was erected in 1909. At the time, the cost of building for the first phase that uh, was opened on the 23rd of February 1910 was uh, 2,380 pounds, which it cost to build the single story. But they soon realized that uh, that was insufficient for the uh, purposes and they decided to enlarge it and for that second phase, uh, Lord Salborn, who was then the High Commissioner for South Africa, gave £3,000 for the second phase. As the need for services increased, permanent structures such as administrative buildings, offices and lecturing halls were built. In a few years, various workshops, a hostel and a farm manager's house were added. Most of the structures conform to the popular architecture of Potchefstroom and surroundings. Potchefstroom, the oldest town in the 19th century Transvaal Republic, features some of the best preserved architecture in South Africa. Much of the credit for the preservation of the city's historic buildings must go to interest groups and conservation-minded officials. The Agricultural College at the time, especially in the first, I would say, 50, 60 years of its existence, was a, a very important institution, uh, not only in Potchefstroom, but in um, South Africa. A name inseparable from the experimental farm is Alexander Hollam, who facilitated the development of the farm and a curriculum that addressed the needs of the region. The Salborn Hall became the headquarters of the Africana Cattle Breeders Society that was founded here in the beginning of the 20th century. In a few years, the experimental farm quickly established itself as a hub for teaching and training budding farmers in various agricultural fields. Within 30 years after its foundation in 1903, 
the institution became a fully-fledged tertiary college and its solid reputation spread rapidly all over South Africa. The Agricultural College was from the outset a college in every sense of the word. Besides a solid academic and scientific foundation, students participated in a variety of cultural, sporting and academic activities. In due course, students of the Agricultural College became popularly known as Pampunbure or pumpkin farmers. Het Pampunbure klinkt so half dom. Je het al te bekend gestaan as Pampunbure en daar was natuurlijk een deurlopende. Je werd gevecht in alle stekens tussen die Pampunbure en die POK studenten. Je het die opleiding college voordat hulle ingeleid was by die universiteit die het. The architecture of the permanent buildings of the Agricultural College was a source of great pride for staff and students alike. Ek en my onmiddellike twee voorgangers, jy weet dit is daard gestel van hoe ons gebou is, die voorkomst moet wees, en jy weet dat ons was trots op, jy ook die terrein. But in the 1990s, decay set in, and some of the historical landmarks of the college regressed into dilapidated old buildings. The Salborn Hall was the last time that it was inhabited or used by the place there was in 1983. So it's been standing empty for the past 30 years. It has been declared a national monument in 1976. And the fact that it is in such disrepair at the moment is um, a sad, sad thing for a heritage potterstroom. To ek nou begelend het vir a familie dat pomflette daar gaan afhaal het, dat die persoon vir my gesê het dat elf vensters is met ramen al verweider en binnen is alle metaal, krane, pijpe verweider en verkoop vir ouwe eisten. En om het so vervallen te sien, dat dan maak het my emoties in jou wakker, jy weet.
Another architectural tragedy at the Agricultural College is the old administrative building, a declared national monument that has been left to fade into a filthy mess. This is the oldest administrative building. It was built long before the Navorsons and Ari and it is also a gedenkwaardigheid. The importance of these buildings are that they are architecturally unique. Although the Selborne Hall is the more aesthetically beautiful one of the two, I think that the old Admin building, which they moved into in around about 1907, is perhaps the more interesting one of the two. Very significant because of the beautiful uh, but simplistic gables based on the Cape Dutch style on the outside of the building. Very simplistic with its concave and convex forms. The building has a beautiful harmony and an excellent rhythmic quality when you look at the facade. It is a lovely example of the revival style. It was said that the Selborne Hall was designed by the famous South African architect Herbert Baker, but we could find no evidence that that is the case. From an aesthetic point of view, the Selborne building is rather beautiful, although also rather strange because of the way in which they've included smaller windows alongside the main entrance. When we look at the tripartite gabling uh, above the main entrance, uh, then it is also reminiscent very much of the Cape Dutch style, but in this case obviously a revival style. But there's also the arts and crafts Edwardian influence that you see, uh, very typical, I would almost say Herbert Baker-ish. There is no doubt that when we look at the surface mouldings, for example, and the niches and the cornices of this building, it does reflect an aspect of especially the Edwardian style, no doubt. So it's, it's an architectural fusion that makes it very interesting and quintessentially South African. The National Heritage Act that stipulated that older buildings that are older than 60 years must be looked after and they must be kept or they must be functional use for it. Furthermore, because of the fact that they belong to the Public Works Department, the Public Works Department are responsible for the maintaining and the restoration of these buildings by law. In the current state, the Public Works Department, a government department, is breaking the law. We've had many endeavours over the past few years speaking to um, officials and so on to encourage them to restore this place, but it really fell on deaf ears. Although not without maintenance issues, some historical buildings such as a hostel with Cambridge, Oxford and Yale sections, as well as the Alex Holm Hall, have been preserved. Some say, however, that these buildings do not carry the same political stigma as, for example, the Selborne Hall. It's got Cape Dutch gables. Cape Dutch gables read colonialism, read apartheid. That's why the Alex Holm Hall was restored. It's slightly more modern looking. The agricultural people, according to Johan Wolfart, do not want to restore the two national monuments. They want new buildings. Secondly, Public Works Department doesn't want to spend any money on this. They want it gone, they want a new building there, 
end of discussion. They don't want to restore it. The feeling is that the Selborne building must be demolished. These buildings are completely sound. Um, they need to be restored. They can be restored. They're not beyond help. It's sometimes difficult because the public works doesn't have the expertise or the skills in dealing with buildings that's older than 60 years. The main problem is that who's responsible? We don't know. Nobody from the Public Works Department is coming forward saying, look, we are responsible. They don't answer emails, they don't want to correspond with you. The moment that you ask them about the Agricultural College, they go all silent, they go all stiff-lipped, they don't want to talk about it. The abandoned and neglected buildings at the Agricultural College that caused a public uproar are both declared national monuments and part and parcel of the treasured heritage of the Greater Potestroom. Thousands of tourists from South Africa and overseas visit Potestroom each year. And high on their wish list are buildings that tell the story of this beautiful city. If we get visitors to Potchestrum and they see how the buildings uh, look at the moment, they would say, well, well, this is going to rack and ruin, we don't want to come here. If you revitalize and restore it, you can use it for a new identity. Places or towns or cities or whatever with old buildings uh, create a happy feeling in people. I must say that to me it is a great pity that these buildings have been left and have become as dilapidated as they are because this represents my heritage. It is a national treasure. It's, it, it's, uh, it's a heritage resource for the whole of South Africa. If you don't restore the old buildings and if you don't keep them up and uh, keep them functional anymore, it creates a negative atmosphere. To demolish these buildings is to deprive South Africa of two architectural gems. And my forefathers have been in this country more than 300 years. They come from the Cape Dutch environment and to me it would be a great pity if these buildings were not renovated to their former status. If you just let, allow the stuff to go to ruin, people will think there's nothing being there and, and that's, that's not how it should be.